That's in full view of the crowd being restrained by Yogi Berra and Elston Howard. Elston Howard has his man. Billy gets around, but now Yogi's got him and trying to wrestle him down. Yogi's got him. Yogi's got him, and who's that on the bench? That's Bobby Cox, I believe. No, that was Dick Hauser had him from behind, and Yogi has him from in front. And in full view of uh, the Boston crowd on the right side. And certainly, as you can see, in full view of our cameras, and we would presume the Game of the Week cameras as well. I want to get the kids off the, the dugout. If I just put a towel over the NBC camera over the lens down there. One of the Yankee ball players, they didn't want that to be shown, but unfortunately, it was shown, but having room with Billy Martin and played with him for so many years, I know the explosive temper he has. This is Grass, G-R-E-S, and I thank you for taking the time to look at this video. Please do hit the like, subscribe button. I find myself today in uh, Hawthorne, New York, Westchester County, uh, visiting the grave of a former Yankee manager who, if you don't know anything about sports, if you don't... Uh, have no interest in it, you don't find it funny, you find it boring, just for the simple fact of this man um, being <laughs> hired and fired by the New York Yankees. Uh, <laughs> a love-hate relationship, to say the least. Five times hired and, uh, hired and fired. It's comical. <laughs> I thought my resume had a lot of jobs there, which I needed to explain. Uh, but this man here, uh, he, he definitely had a story to tell. One of the most colorful uh, managers, uh, I think uh, it's safe to say, in baseball history. Love-hate relationship with uh, George uh, George Steinbrenner. George Steinbrenner, uh, uh, you know, obviously a a, a a type A personality. Billy Martin, you could definitely say, was a type A personality as well. And a lot of the times, when you have type A personalities, they really do not... Uh, mesh well do not get along with each other well so and just a point of reference uh he is billy martin is buried in section 25 which is also the same section that um babe ruth is buried in literally the best way to describe it on opposite ends they're both kind of if you're driving down the road you see, you see their graves if you're paying close attention they're on opposite sides here um but this is the gate of heaven cemetery in case i did not mention that so you know billy martin he had a playing career from 46 to, to 61. um You know, he was a okay player. Not uh, anything outstanding by any means of the imagination here. Nothing that's going to stand out at you. Where he really kind of got his name and got his reputation... Um, was as a manager. So, and he loved managing. You know, he loved managing. He would kind of tell you uh, the, the way it is. Sometimes, you know, especially, I don't know, a, a manager like Billy Martin, in today's day and age, I don't know if Billy Martin would even 
make it would even last because a lot of the times the athletes nowadays are prima donnas so the famous uh give you an example here billy martin would get into it with um you know his players got into it with uh reggie jackson famous billy and jackson clash and dugout that was the daily news um you know <laughs> The article, national TV, against the Red Sox of all teams. This is the grave of Alfred Manuel Billy Martin. 1928 to 1989. I may not have been, the inscription says, I may not have been the greatest Yankee to put on the uniform, but I was the proudest until we meet again. So, kind of to put it into perspective, you know, so he was a fiery c character. Let's give you a summary, though, of, uh, you know, how, how many times he was, you know, with, with the Yankees, just so you guys could have it in perspective. Um, he was with the Yankees 75 to 78, then 79 to 79, 83 to 83, and then 85 to 85, 88 till 88 overall win uh, win uh, win loss record was 1253 and 1013 a 553 win percentage in a postseason he was 15 and 19 so he had this reputation right Billy James said that Billy Martin uh, improved every team he ever managed in his first year in control, usually by huge margins. Like, there was a huge, um, you know, huge game, you know, huge difference of win-loss record in the, in, the, in the first years there. And then he had this personality where um, people were ready to get rid of him by the third year. So, a lot of why Billy Martin would receive criticism, uh, it, it, you know, Chris Jaffe said in his book, right, that Martin was the perfect manager to hire if you wanted an immediate improvement and the worst manager for a team seeking sustained success. Part of this uh, was because Martin would do whatever it took to win that day and not worry about any negative side effects in the future even if it meant a shortened career for his players. In 88, the Elias Sports Bureau, right, proclaimed that Martin was the best manager in Major League history. Based on a model that they found that Martin's teams won 7.45 more games per year than they should have as predicted by stats, right? Higher than any other manager. You know, he, he sought to catch uh, the other team by surprise. Techniques such as stealing home. Uh, once having two twins, because he did manage it, the, the twins, steal home on different pitches of the same at bat when he had uh, Slugger Harmon Killebrew at the plate. Even though, you know, George um, 
Steinbrenner and Billy Martin, you know, uh, clashed and had their um, had their uh, arguments. George Steinbrenner obviously respected him because he thought he was a ge baseball genius just for the intuitive way that he managed his teams. Tony La Russa said that he's the most brilliant field manager he ever saw. Third most successful manager of the 1970s, behind Sparky, Anderson, and Earl Weaver. The most controversial. That's what was said of him. You know, Billy Martin, uh, I think it's safe to say, all that he ever wanted to do was win. And that's why, you know, so you had instances of, you know, arguments between uh, your star player and Reggie Jackson and... Um,
George Brent has just homered, and Billy Martin and the Yankees want the bat. Look at Martin. Well, what they're talking about, Frank, is that he's got too much pine tar, and uh, you've got to have a certain amount of distance from the trademark of the bat and the pine tar. And Nettles is leaving the field as if the game is over. No, he's just coming in. I'm not sure. Uh, they might have a legitimate uh, gripe. And the umpires are going to get together. George Brett looking around and wanting to know what's going on. And the umpires are going to get together and talk about this thing. Well, Billy Martin bounced right out I've, of the dugout. I've seen it called before, Frank. You are not allowed to have a substance of any, of any kind above the trademark. And I can't tell from here because everybody's huddled around the bat. I cannot tell from here if it's uh, up too far. And now they're both, they're all, they're feeling it, see, as if there's a, some sticky stuff around there. That's Nick Bremigan with the this bat. This is right going to be an interesting call. Well, Brett isn't sure whether he has a home run yet or not. Now the umpires are going to walk away and talk about this and go over the rules and examine the bat. See where the pints are. See the label. The trademark is. Yep. See the brown substance there. Well, they're going to see what's going to happen. They're going to. Now that is the plate umpire, Tim McClellan, with the bat in his hand. Now they're going to measure it across home plate. Well, I've, I've never, I've never seen this. I never have either. I don't know what, I don't know what they're measuring. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look, look at this. Brett is out. And He's demon mad. He is out. And having to be.